Welcome to Start Dakota, a show by Startup Sioux Falls, where we dispel misconceptions about starting a business, uncover unique challenges faced by founders, highlight today's problem solvers, and build a stronger startup community for tomorrow. This project is powered by the SBA. Hey everyone, Amos Bilo with Startup Sioux Falls here for another episode of the Start Dakota podcast. I'm also joined by two incredible individuals that I've had the pleasure to meet, but have been involved with our organization through a specific opportunity called the Co-Starters Weekend Boot Camp. So we're going to get into what the boot camp is, who it could be for, what some of the key lessons are, but really dive into Brady and Terry's stories to pull out these insights, both from having more experience down the road and then also some of that new experience, someone who's been through the boot camp, so we can bring these to you today and make it useful. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. I've said their names, but Terry, how about you start? Let us know who you are, what you do, and just get out, get us up to speed a little bit on how you got involved with this opportunity. Very cool. Thanks, Amos, for having me. Good to be here with Brady again. Absolutely. My name is Terry Liggins. I'm the CEO and founder at two different startups. I have a nonprofit called Hurdle Life Coach Foundation. We provide coaching and mentorship to youth that are vulnerable and at risk. They're kind of going through single parent home issues, adversity, different traumas, and we help them to get on the right track, get them graduated from high school, get them looking into the workforce, off to college. And we also provide support to adults as well in transition to straighten their lives out as well. My for-profit is called TLC Services. I'm just as excited about that. I provide leadership, coaching, consulting, and group facilitation through TLC. Our mission at TLC is to equip and empower difference makers to mature in exceptional leadership. And so with that spirit, whether it's at my nonprofit or my for-profit, that's what I'm looking to do. Build life skills, job skills, character to help people be leaders. And I, so I've had the opportunity to partner with Startup Sioux Falls as the inaugural Boots camp facilitator <laughs> and uh, it was a great experience and i'm thrilled to be here to talk about it today awesome yeah we're happy to have you and we look forward to future partnerships yes you bring sir. your facilitation skills he was actually just showing us a video uh that came from the event and was just seeing your excitement for it yeah. and then also uh people telling testimonials about your ability to facilitate which yeah. really plays into an, a successful opportunity so thank you brady your team uh, you know, that's kind of a tough act to follow for uh, me, no. but uh, uh, yeah, my name is Brady, uh, Brady Barr. My company is called Allergy Wear. I'm also very thankful to be here today with you two. You guys are awesome. Um, but yes, Allergy Wear. So I, I uh, create allergy menus with restaurants. Um, and so that kind of comes from, I grew up having a ton of food allergies, milk, eggs, nuts. And so if I walk into a restaurant and there's this big menu, it's pretty, it's pretty overwhelming. And I'm like, okay, what can I eat? And I got to ask the server, hey, can you go see if there's milk in the chicken strips? And they comes back, milk, got to find something else. It's just back and forth, so overwhelming. And so big restaurants, um, I think chains of five or more have a law that every that they have to have an allergy menu, uh, which kind of just displays all the food items and all the allergens on a nice chart. So you can go in, see what I can eat, what I can't. Um, but these smaller restaurants don't have this law. And so I started Allergy Aware to try to make smaller restaurants um, offer allergy menus. Sure. How yeah. far how far along are you in this journey of allergy aware? Um, so I started two years ago. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, I started in college in Mankato. We did one restaurant there, and then um, we've done one in Sioux Falls, and that was um, Papa Woody's right down by Falls Park there. Which has delicious pizza. Which has delicious Shout pizza out and to all Lisa. kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. All kinds <laughs> of stuff. Shout out Lisa for sure. And... Um, one thing exciting there, a pretzel bun, not something I would ever think that I'd be able to eat, but the allergy menu shows me that I can eat that even with my allergies. So it's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. So, awesome. Uh, so to bring you up to speed on what this boot camp is, uh, weekend boot camp, what was it, 16 hours, about 16 hours mm -hmm. of facilitated content. So really bringing a bunch of people, 20 people with partners even into an environment and dealing with the information that they need at a manageable rate, but also kind of like a, it's a hackathon, it's a sprint and mm -hmm. um, really getting them going with their idea into an actionable state of mind mm -hmm. and with actionable 
uh, information to move forward with an existing business or even yeah. pursue a dream or an idea. So yeah. that's my take on it. But Terry, you're the one who actually was there at this first one. Yeah. Can you give your insight into what was so cool about it? Yeah. Um, the interactions. Yeah. Maybe just bring us in to the, to the to, into the room. Yeah. So the the boot camp is an accelerated version of the co-starters core program. So startup Sioux Falls, as you know, it has partnered with co-starters to really be the premier f curriculum for their business accelerator course. And I got trained at a, as a co-starters facilitator maybe one or two years ago and partnered with one of the spoke organizations, LSS, to provide the 10-week curriculum to my program was with non-native English speakers. And so I had the privilege of going through the 10-week program twice. What I like about the boot camp is that it condenses it into four sessions over two days, and it really identifies four key sessions that if a person was to come into that environment and really still be in the ideation stage or maybe be in the launching stage, the information from that four session boot camp gave them what they would need to really bring more clarity to the mystery. I love doing that. I think in leadership and in life and no matter what you're doing, oftentimes there's confusion, which brings to low confidence. And I know that with more clarity comes more confidence. Mm -hmm. So with the boot camp, there's four different modules. The first one is called Discover. So we're going to ask questions to really prone and prime them to think about what is your idea? What is your vision? What, where, where is this going and where did it come from? After Discover, we go to Promote because in order to have any customer, they have to know that you exist. So promote and marketing is all about how do you raise the awareness? What type of visibility mediums are out there? And there's a lot right now. I mean, technology mm -hmm. and social medias and all these different you know, ways to spread your message. But which one's the right message for your company and which one's the right message for your ideal customer? So we spend time talking about promote as well. Then we go into build and now we're getting into the numbers and really diving in in a way where you get an understanding on what's happening in the business revenue wise startup cost wise ongoing cost wise and what the heck is a break even point mm -hmm. <laughs> i find that in either in the co in the core program or in the boot camp many entrepreneurs never heard the term approached it or have computed what it is is their break even so that's a really pivotal point that I've seen as a facilitator helping the entrepreneur and the founder understand the concept of break even and then and just working towards when when do I arrive there because the purpose of business is to, to help people but also to make a profit you don't want to just have a hobby you want to have a successful business that's making a profit but you first need to understand when do I even break even and then the last component is called launch and that's where you really look at what are my 30 60 and 90 day goals what do I go from here to really help continue to guide me in the momentum in the energy and i really thought it was just put together very well i thought those four uh, blocks were appropriate blocks and i just had a ton of fun bringing that accelerated experience over two days mm -hmm. um, to 20 entrepreneurs and founders um, for the boot camp at startup awesome and then just one more question these 20 you, you explained that really well uh these 20 entrepreneurs what kind of people were in there what, what type of businesses how long were they in business were they brand new ideas yeah or kind of a mix of all of it well i'll tell you you'll hear about the diversity of entrepreneurs and it's true and, and, you know, the energy that's behind bringing entrepreneurship to a more accessible place um, is appropriate because you can make anything into a business, truly. And there was a diversity of ideas and business owners in there, people who had ideas around, you know, how to take care of pets like doggy daycares of sorts. There were people who were there to really help to bring efficiencies to HR and HR reps. And how do you really work through some of those workforce challenges? One of my favorite students. Brady, the allergy aware con uh, <laughs> idea. I love that. I'm not a person that's typically concerned for that, but I love helping people that are region uh -huh. marginalized people that you might overthink and overlook. And so someone like Brady in there with allergy aware, there was people who were about healing inner child circle and wanting to help people find their inner child and heal their inner child. There was fashion, you know, tech. It was it was it was really diverse. Yeah. Um, the, the, the student. There was Wood, a woodworking one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And these were all ideas or part time, correct? Any full timers or anything like that? I don't know if anybody was full time. I think yeah, most we of the students specific. there, yeah, so were, were kind of still 
ideating it. People were definitely still ideating it. Some people were actually in in programs and operation a bit. So I think it was really uh, part timers. Uh, really kind of trying to build up their their side hustle. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I want your experience. Now, yeah. this is from the facilitator standpoint, but if you could bring us into the room in that weekend, what were a couple things that really stood out to you from the interactions or the experience? Um, definitely like the people and the community aspect. Um, I've been wanting to get involved with Startup Sioux Falls for a long time. I've known, I've like heard of it, um, but I've just never, never gone. And then finally this boot camp kind of came about and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to that. And right away, it was like just such a cool community because every conversation um, that you start with people, at, at first, everyone's a little bit shy, of course. Um, but it's so easy to go talk to people and say, hey, what's your business? And they're, everybody's just so excited about everything. Um, I get to tell about my business. I get to hear about their business. And it's just such a cool environment. And kind of, we all kind of became friends really quickly um, in just two days. Of knowing someone, and I, I'm still like texting somewhat frequently with multiple people from the class, nice. uh, which is pretty incredible for just being there for two days. Yeah. And where exactly are you at in your business? So how many years have you done it? Have you done other businesses? Well, how many hours do you put towards it? Um, let's see. So right now, I'd say I put. Gosh, hours is, is tough. It definitely varies upon week and other businesses. Um, I actually do have another business. It's called Let Us Sell Your Stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a joke, just me and my buddies on Facebook Marketplace. Um, my next door neighbor was moving and he had all this stuff to get rid of and he had to sell his house and buy a new one. And it's just like, he's like, I got three weeks to do this. What do I do with all my stuff? And I was like, hey, I've sold, I've sold stuff on Facebook before. I can, I can post it for you and I'll try to do something, you know. I ended up selling like everything that he had in a pretty quick amount of time. So I was like, this is this could be a real business. So I made flyers and I started putting them up and that's been going pretty well as well. But Allergy Aware is like my, that is like my, my passion, my baby. Mm -hmm. This other one is just kind of there. So I guess, um, yeah, Allergy Aware is my main focus. Sure. Did that answer the question? It yeah, did not. Yeah. No, because you <laughs> well, asked yeah, for yeah, hours asked and you didn't give me any hours, but hours you're yeah, keeping busy. Varies. Couldn't tell you, very busy. <laughs> hours I work, vary. I work uh, full time at a different job and then I do these two things in my free time. So Sure. Yeah. What was the the mentality behind the decision you made to actually apply for this, to finally get involved with Startup Sioux Falls? I know you, you th I think you'd applied to something else in the past. Um, but what would you say to someone who hasn't made a decision to join a boot camp or come to the event? And what helped you do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Funny you mentioned that. I actually got denied the previous year. And so I was like, all right, well, next time around, I applied right away. I got in. So I was thrilled. So excited to go. Um, but I think it's like, thankfully for, for like for my business, I kind of had a lot of the legwork done. Like I made a 501c3 nonprofit in advance. Um, and I, I kind of have a lot of things set up for it. And then I just kind of got to go and do it now. Um, but even people that just had ideas, like um, there was a couple people without even a business name. So anyone that just wants to be in this space of entrepreneurship and you got some kind of idea or maybe you just have the name and you got to figure out what to do now. I think I think anybody that wants to be involved in this space should sign up for uh, the boot camp. Yeah. And what, what is that experience that encourages you to say that to someone who just has an idea? Like, why would they actually come to an event or Startup Sioux Falls to be around other entrepreneurial people? It's just so cool. Everybody has advice for you and everyone wants to help each other. Um, just today I was talking to Sharon, I think her name is. Yeah, Shannon. Shannon, there yeah, we go. Shannon. My bad, sorry, Shannon. <laughs> um, but yeah, she was, just, she was just saying how everyone just wants to give, 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 like give you any kind of way that they can help you. So if you don't know much about anything <laughs> um, in the in the in the starting a new business world, um, I think you just show up and everybody is willing to help you. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Awesome. We'd love to have you guys come uh, visit Startup Sioux Falls. We're also a nonprofit. So so many of our services are at no cost uh, to the participants. There's free meetups. There's 
like more structured types of events and programs and there's less structured events and programs to kind of meet everyone where they're at or just come and have a call with me and I'll get you directed to whatever it is, even maybe in making an introduction to Terry or Brady, whatever is useful. Um, I know last time, Terry, we talked about um, or every time we talk, you've got yeah. these catchphrases, these things, these mantras, these yeah. principles that you follow that have helped you in these three years and even prior to get to where you are right now and yeah. continue moving forward. Mm. So talking to Brady, but also to our audience, what uh, what are some mantras or principles that you used when you were at his stage mm. to continue into mm. the path of full time yeah. self-employment? Yeah. Yeah, great question, and and thanks for the shout out. So I, my companies are coming up on four years now, full time. I went full time January 2020, right, and didn't see the pandemic pandemic coming, and and of course the other things were happening during 2020 as well. But you know, I recall being in the midst of all that chaos in June of 2020, and one of my advisors, one of my mentors, said, Terry what you do and who you are, you're shaped for this environment. Your whole mantra, your whole mindset, your whole hurdle life, right? One of my mantras is helping people to get through adversity and chaos, helping people to get over barriers. And everybody right now in the middle of this pandemic are full of those barriers. CEOs particularly, I was talking to a CEO friend of mine and it really encouraged me, it really affirmed me. And so the power of mentorship, goodness gracious, yeah, when you have an idea and you have a vision and you have some confidence, the power of just surrounding yourself with people with more experience than you have that are willing to really speak that life into you, that encouragement into you, borrow, borrow their faith and confidence in you while you're still building yours up. That's huge. And we talk about that even in the in the program, in the curriculum about the power of and the importance of building a team. It, it is known that businesses often fail because entrepreneurs are trying to do it alone. Mm -hmm. You have to build a team around you, not just team members, but advisors and mentors. So one of the first things to my success was reaching out to three mentors and saying, this is what I want to do. Will you meet with me once a, a month? I'll share with you what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, who I've met. And then you share with me what you think about that and what I should do next. And that really helped me in my early you know, 12 months, 24 months, and still today, I still surround myself with those mentors. But I also do have mindset, mantras, you know, affirmations of sorts. One is plan the work and then work the plan. Plan the work and then work the plan. So the power of putting it to pencil to pad and just writing down what it is that you want to accomplish, really setting those goals and moving towards those finish lines. That's, that's really powerful. Plan the work and work the plan. I'll give you one more. And that's persistence beats resistance every single time. If you just fire yourself up and be more determined to get over the hurdle than, than it is to be intimidated by it, because let me give you an insight, hurdles are meant to not stop you, they are just impede you, but they'll fall over if you run right into them. And every hurdle you clear actually builds confidence, strength, and speed for the next hurdle. Hurdles are opportunities. Hurdles are opportunities. So when you get fired up and you see an obstacle in front of you, but you know what? That you know that you have an opportunity to demonstrate your resilience, your determination, your faith. You see hurdles and you get fired up. So persistence beats resistance every single time. Yeah. And you know, the plan is to have, what, three steps between each hurdle? Yeah. yeah. And so you need to hit those three <laughs> steps. You better not slow down. You better not speed up yeah. necessarily. You got to keep you yeah. got to work the plan yeah. to yeah. get over the hurdles. Rhythm. Yeah. There's all that in there, wow. but for huh. sure. What about you? You got any mantras, principles you follow? <laughs> Again, tough act to follow. That was just You're incredible. All Gosh, I'm just sitting here. I'm, I might as well be in the well, audience. I do have to share one, though. Yeah, Sorry go for to interrupt. It. My favorite one, and it's not necessarily useful for an entrepreneur, but... Feed two birds with one scone. Yeah. <laughs> one scone. I had never, nice. heard, that I've never heard that before. It's so much nicer yeah. than kill yeah. two birds. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I don't need to kill anybody. Yeah, people used to be yeah. pretty violent. Yeah. Nice star. Oh, jeez. Nice um, I have one. I have one, and it is, believe it or not, it's from this guy. Poor. Nice. Poor. Yeah. You, and I want you to, I think you should explain it because it's definitely going to be better than well, what I got. Thanks, Brady. Yeah. Br I like Brady a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm he quotes, de yeah. <laughs> I've decided to, I've decided to ask him to let me be his mentor. You know, when I found out that his nonprofit was 
um, when his plant allergy aware was a nonprofit and me having my MPA and nonprofit administration running a nonprofit, I want to see this guy win. And I didn't know that you asked me to be your mentor, but I'm absolutely all in. Yeah, so that's that's pretty exciting for well, me. Well, right when here I'm willing right to start to set you up with meetings yeah. and use my network to I advance even, your mission. I thought maybe that was a one time thing, but no. hey, I'm excited. Let's go. It'll be good. Um, so and then part of that mentorship or sometimes I even call it friendorship is is is, you know, sharing your wisdom with each other and having someone who like a sponge like this guy who wants to learn wants to grow wants to lead wants to succeed so the the concept he's talking about is called poor and and when you think of the word poor you can think of the material things or you can think of the non-material things either way a person that is poor is kind of deprived of something and what i found is that there's a reason people end up poor and I'll just get I'll cut, cut straight to it. It's because they pass over opportunities repeatedly. Yeah. So when you look at that word, you see the letters. Here's the acronym. Pass over opportunities repeatedly. It is that action that causes people to be deprived from what they could then possess. Right. So if you choose to say yes to opportunities when they present themselves, if you choose to prepare yourself for opportunities that you want to come to pass, when the, when the opportunity does come, because it will, it's not a lack of opportunity that is the issue if people are rich or poor. It's people passing over opportunities repeatedly that causes them to end up in that type of situation. Mm -hmm. So I love encouraging people to, to capitalize on opportunity, uh, say yes, try new things, and, and don't end up poor from that, that habit of passing over opportunities repeatedly. Where'd you get that? By the way, like, do you make up, do you make this stuff up yourself or do you learn this from someone else? Both. Okay. Both. Some, some things come straight to me. I created myself. I'm a geek for communication and stuff. I'm part of our Toastmasters club. Yeah. He said, start up yeah, Sioux I'll Falls. I'll be there Monday. You'll be there Monday. Oh, yes. And nice. so some of these things I create and some of those things have been given to me. And then my generosity, I share them with others. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'm trying not to get distracted because I'm thinking, what could a good acronym be for rich or I got it. wealth? You got I got one? rich. Yeah, yeah. there's a flip too, side. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, well, okay. quick, we, need, we need to hear that one. Well, it, and then if you flip the coin, <laughs> goodness <laughs> gracious, I'm all fired up. Rich is you want to be ready. You want to be inclusive. You want to be caring. And then you want to be helpful. And so embody all those things. Like I said, be ready. Be ready for opportunity. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Be inclusive. Invite people to come to things with you. Do that. Care sincerely from your heart. Want the best for other people and then be helpful. And then if you embody those things, it'll lead to you being rich. Mm. There you go. I did make and that one And not just up. rich in money, rich, nice. in, rich, in, anyway. rich in life. Poor was given yeah. to me, rich I coined myself for okay. the flip side. Okay, gotcha. Awesome. One thing I do want to talk about with you guys um, is this transition from part-time in the cracks type of work or running two different side hustles, one to pay for the passion while also having the full-time job to pay for the, whatever the house. Um, I want to talk about the jump off point though. Some people jump, some people are pushed into it, but what was that transition like for you, Terry? I want you to talk about from part-time to full-time. How did you make that decision? Yeah. And again, where's the nuggets of advice that you can provide to Brady as he's doing this? And then Brady, I wanna hear from you too on what you're thinking right now. Like yeah. what this is like, is it is it chaotic? Is it hectic? Is it fun? Um, I'm gonna actually start with you, Brady, because yeah. we, we, we will go back and forth a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, start with me. Um, well, yeah, like you mentioned, like I, I have let us sell your stuff. I have allergy aware, and then I have my normal job, and um, that's just at Amazon. Okay, so right, now, I don't know. My dream is just to get rid of the Amazon and then go full time with the other two. And yeah, let us sell your stuff is kind of just cash, right, right here, right now. And allergy aware is like long term. That could be big and awesome, but it'll be a while, I imagine. So. Um, imagine going full-time yeah like that's the dream so i can't even imagine it to be honest like i can't imagine just not having a place that i have to go four times five times a week for my entire day hmm, i can't yeah. imagine that that would be absolutely awesome <laughs> um what, what was the other question in there yeah i just want your experience like what is it like day to day presently for you right now in this time of life when you're doing all three of these things wanting the full-time 
what's your plan? Or do you just go day to day and just like, hey, I got to win today. I got to work hard today and move yeah. the ball forward. I think it's kind of just day to day. And I, I'm, I'm a pretty optimistic person. And so I don't kind of, I don't really dwell on the negativity because like I could be stressed out, freaking out that none of the three technically are enough to get me to my dreams right now. But I just feel like if I keep kind of pushing away a little bit every day, um, and consistency is is something that's pretty tough for me and in all areas of my life I'm not the most uh, consistent person but um, I've definitely gotten more consistent within the last year or two Um, and so I think that's really important and just to um, work the plan what was it plan Plan the work work, plan the work work the plan yeah Yeah. like I always got a to-do list going and as Mm -hmm. long as I'm just consistently doing something um, I I know that it'll happen at some at some point. Sure. Okay. So you're you're pulling out a couple of things, being optimistic, making a plan, a list of tasks, even if if that's your plan, and working the plan, getting those things done, being persistent, mm-hmm. building some consistency in that persistence mm-hmm. to overcome adversity and obstacles, um, and then connecting yourself with other people is what we've already talked about. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Surrounding yourself with a mentor, with opportunities, being ready for opportunities. Okay. And then is there anything? really unique about you that you would point out that makes you think I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a successful entrepreneur. I will be full time, not having to go to Amazon someday. What's unique to you that lets you say that? I don't know. That's a tough question. Or do you even tell yourself that? That's, uh, tell yourself that? No, I don't think I do. I think, um, I think I just believe in my ideas kind of, and, um, I don't know. I see a lot of value in both of them. And I got to get my name out there more so that everybody else sees the value as well. And then once everybody else does, that's where the money comes and that's where it becomes uh, something that I can support myself fully with. Sure. Yeah. Believe in your ideas. Yeah. Like Ted Lasso would say, believe. Believe. That's you one of my favorite like TV. Lasso. Thank you. Thank you. That's, <laughs> a, that's the best compliment you're, I've you're had this year. You're kind of giving Ted Lasso Thank right you. now. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. And then being Slip careful. That. I will say being careful. We just had an event this morning. And this was something that one of the facilitators really hammered in on is there's got to be a problem first that the solution is built for versus, you know, I have an idea or I have a solution, something I truly believe in. I know it's valuable, but other people don't. I need to go tell other people it's valuable and hopefully it'll solve their issue, the one that I have. Um, so yeah, find the people that have the problem. Right. And then that's going to be a slippery slope when you're like, Oh, you have that problem too. That's why I made this. Mm. I'd be happy to tell you about it if you're open. It is cool. It is cool when you, when I find other people with food allergies and every time I explain it, they're like, that would be so amazing. That's awesome. I actually just, um, last week I met someone had the exact same food allergies as me. Um, so we went and got coffee just kind of to, just kind of to talk about what our lives been like, kind of. Cause it is, it is like kind of a struggle growing mm-hmm. up with it. Um, <laughs> and he actually is a video videographer kind of thing. And so I think we're going to be doing some kind of digital business card. So that could help push the name out there. Nice. Using Terry's as an example that these guys made, right? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So Terry, yeah. talking to Brady, but also the audience once again. Sure. And what was the jump off point for you how did you know that okay now's the time to kind of cut ties with yeah. the security that comes from a different job was it even like that for yeah. you what was what was the experience what advice can you pull out of that yeah so to each their own it's cliche and true that everybody's going to have their own journey with you know entrepreneurship part time to full time one of the best advice i've gotten along the way in mentorship was to work full time on your business and part time on your fortune and, and allow for yourself to really build up the customer base, build up the revenue streams and really, you know, carefully, cautiously, and almost, you know, methodically build up that income until it until it mirrors and matches what you're doing in your full time. It's not really advisable to take the leap away from your full time stability when your part time hustle doesn't have the same financial strength. Mm-hmm. So the wisest practice would be to build it up, give yourself the the understanding, the grace and patience to know that it will take time. Success does not happen overnight. Doesn't. It takes time. 
And so knowing that and giving yourself the room to build it for 12 months, build it for 24 months, whatever it takes. And, and then one relationship can be a catalyst that really expedites the trajectory of your business. And so you just never know when that, where that next yes is going to come, when that next yes is going to come and where it's going to take you to, but work part time and really build it up in a, in a way where you don't put yourself in a position where you can't afford your rent and mm -hmm. you can't take care of your family and your basic necessities. I just want to say that. And then for, for me, particularly, sometimes the universe does it for you. Um, I was working at a, at a place at a nonprofit, things were going well. And then it came to the point where it was no longer a fit and my employment ended. Fortunately, I had already had my LLC incorporated a year before my employment ended. So personally for me, I wasn't quite ready to go full time, but the universe kind of said, you know what? It's time. And I was able to step out on my faith in my higher power, my faith and my skill set and my ability to connect with people, um, to network, to communicate, and then my faith in the goodness of other people. Those are really my, my three recipes that I set off with and I still live out today. Faith in higher power, faith in my abilities, and then faith in the goodness of the people around me. And I was able to step out in June 2020, and I've been able to sustain myself since. Mm. Not that I'm completely out the woods as a three-and-a-half-year-old company. I, I definitely still feel the seasons of strain. That's a toddler. But I, but I go to work every day uh, looking to create new activity, take those coffees. The fortune is in the follow-up. There's another business tip. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you would be so amazed on how fast your customer, the close happens when you just choose to follow up. Some of us are really good at making those connections and then we fail to follow up um, efficiently. And, and so when, whenever I decide time to do some follow-ups or when I follow up more quickly with, with different contacts, I find that it creates some of that, that stream for me and my business. But I'm three and a half, almost four years old. I'm not out the woods, but I was kind of pushed out the nest, nest um, from, from my, in my own journey. That's, that's sure. Acronym. Gosh. Yeah. I have a friend um, who decided to just jump yeah. without making a dollar from his his side thing that he wanted to create. It's so, crazy. Yeah, quit his job, um, jumped off. He has a family, little baby, don't advise it. Mm -hmm. Now he's scrambling to find a job and build the business at the same time. So mm -hmm. it's just a hectic season and mm -hmm. um, a little scary, a little fearful, but uh, that all, that does ultimately play into his journey and mm -hmm. his experience. Mm -hmm. And you just take the next step forward and whatever decisions you make, mm -hmm. it'll lead you on. Um, one piece of advice that I would give on this scenario is, Find the jobs that directly relate into what you want to build. Yeah. Find the jobs where you can build the skills and the confidence in those skills or the ones that you have not attained yet to develop into the character and the person that you need to be to uh, truly take your thing full time, whether it is five years, 10 years from now. So mm. um, that's worked extremely well for me, mm. um, more so than being in a job you despise and letting that be motivation. Mm -hmm. You're probably still going to be motivated no matter what to start your thing if you're passionate and you believe in it. Right. Um, so be, be strategic, be mm. tactful, mm -hmm. be wise about where you spend your time throughout the day. My thing right now is um, so like I'm at Amazon, right? And I have I have Wednesdays off and then I have weekends off. And so Wednesdays I kind of grind allergy aware, and then weekends I do a little bit of mix. Like I do a lot of meetups to sell things, um, but obviously I'm not I'm not making a lot of money right now, you know. And it's just a kind of internal debate whether I should try to go. I went to college for finance, so I'm like, should I should I try to go get another finance job, or should I just kind of stay here? Because I have so much, my schedule is just so perfect to work on. Yeah, that's a good on way a business, to do it too, for sure. Or multiple businesses. So so right now I'm just kind of betting on myself and I'm just kind of saying yeah. I'm young right now. Yeah. Let's make something yeah. happen. W one thing too that happened when I got pushed out the nets though, and then maybe this will kind of help as well, is save. You know, build your savings. Mm. Um, fortunately, you know, after, you know, being at that place I was for about three years, I had developed a habit of saving from my mentorship, which was new for me. I mean, mentorship is new for me the last seven years. Hmm. My, my background is, is set punctuated with a lot of setbacks. 
That's why, that's why I'm so good at coaching the comeback because of how many times I fell down myself. And as an adult, I got my very first mentor at about 31 years old. And he taught me the value of consistency, integrity, honesty. He demonstrated grace that I'm able to give on to other people. But he also talked to me about budgeting. And I started to Huge. be, you know, intentional about putting something away in my savings every single paycheck. So when my employment ended and I went full time, fortunately, I had a decent amount of savings that was actually able to float me a little bit, too, while I was still trying to, you know, hustle up my new customers. So mm. when you got a job and you got to hustle, like don't put everything into the business allocate something for that, but also build up a savings. So then you kind of have a little bit of a nest egg of sorts um, that can help float you when you finally do decide to take a leap as well. Yeah. Never um, put all your eggs in one basket, as my mother would say. Yes. <laughs> Good phrase. Uh, yeah. My wife runs a business and yeah, looking at her percentages that she has for where the money goes, yeah. it's like 10% comes back to the family. Mm -hmm. Luckily in a partnership like that, I can provide an income 10%, but then there's like 30% in the business savings and 30% into taxes and mm -hmm. everything else is just being like set aside carefully so she mm -hmm. can build and reinvest. So yeah. what is what's, super what good does advice. she do? Uh, luxury gifting for companies and individuals. Oh, I'm wonderfully wow. made gifting co. So nice. that's, yeah, that's it's cool. amazing. It's our whole base. Shout out Kelsey. So, it's yeah, like Christmas out. every day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's fun season right now. I go and help in the evenings. That's just what schedules look like. Uh, two things I want to talk about and we'll kind of wrap it up. Okay. I want to actually pull us into some of those dips and valleys just because a lot of people will go through it their whole life, but especially maybe at the beginning when they're trying things, you know, they can be successful for a little bit and then completely flop or they'll just completely flop. So hmm. let's talk about some of the valleys that maybe either both of you have experienced if you have and how to come out the other side, using that as an opportunity, learning experience. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely business centric. Yeah, I definitely can relate. I mean, I think too, Brady kind of uh, alluded to it a little bit in the boot camp. I talked about a metaphor that was given to me by actually my accountant um, who was advising me in a way and really gave me the, the metaphor about business entity and uh, life course and, and understanding that, you know, a business that's under five years old and a child that's under five years old, there's different faculties and capacities that you can reasonably expect from a toddler and then different for a preteen or an adult. And so in those early stages of the first five years, which I'm at, man, I feel that. I feel the desire to want to have a company that's doing much more revenue or having greater clients and customers and different things, but it, it's still so young. And some seasons are less busy than others. Um, but I find that it's helpful to have that metaphor locked in so that I can regulate my expectations and not feel like I'm freaking failing. Because success is in the trying. To make an honest effort is to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. Too many people set the bar too high on what it is to be a success. And some people have their own definition and it looks like material things or bank account balances. Success is in the trying. And if you're making an honest effort, then you are succeeding. And even on a, on a on like a way smaller scale, um, about setting the bar too high. Mm -hmm. Say you have a big to do list. When like when starting a business, there's a billion things that you got to do. Like I'm sure you still have things that you, there's always something you could do. Mm -hmm. I think you got a you have a massive to do list. You got to just say, hey, I want to get these two these two or three things done today, mm -hmm. and it's make it less overwhelming. And if you are able, are able to get a few things out of the way, then the next day the list is smaller and then you kind of got to chip away at things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like don't get overwhelmed and just get scared away and give up right away. Mm. For sure. This kind of brings up a thought where people like conflict and tension. If you know how to like tell a good story, they, there's got to be tension because people are just drawn into it. Mm -hmm. And so often we're asked, I think at Startup Sioux Falls, but just in general, like, what are your failures though? Like, tell me about your bad times. Tell mm -hmm. me about your failures. Mm -hmm. People are so obsessed and like, they, they really want to hear about those things, maybe mm -hmm. to make themselves feel better, maybe mm -hmm. to, or whatever it is. Um, but it's difficult to have those real conversations, not necessarily because people don't want to talk about it. It's because I would say because entrepreneurial people don't see it that way, right? 
I mean, you don't see failure, you see opportunity, or yeah. you see adversity that needs to be hurdled. Nice. Um, so hurdled. Yeah, that, no, just, that just came to me because, again, people are like, oh, let's do a failure fest. Let's, let's yeah. get these failures on the table. It's like, yeah. well, it's just, it's difficult to talk about it that way because I have a success mindset yeah. around right. it. So huh. that's a good point. Interesting. I would also just kind of add a couple more deposits. I would say um, do, do the things that you enjoy. Sometimes it's really good to get away from work and do something personal and social that will just bring you joy back into your body. So when you feel like you're not getting enough done at work and you're not hitting your work related goals, what is that thing you can go and do that will just shoot so much dopamine up into you that you enjoy it's and it's just going to help you to just get a balance back to to this entrepreneurial grind, which actually for me. I move away from the word grind mm -hmm. even, right? Like I'm not looking to grind myself. You know, I want to thrive. I want to nourish. And I'm going to work and different things like that. But I get it, right? It, it's a grind, but balance that out, right? So for me, an invitation to go play basketball, pick up basketball. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm right back to 12-year-old Terry, 12, 12 year, six, sixth grade, and uh, we're not very many worries in the world. Yeah. And, and it's just basketball courts and pickup basketball games can do that for me. So being intentional about shooting around in my backyard or saying yes to an invitation to go and play some basketball really helps me in my valleys at work. And I'm going to tell you gratitude as well. Celebrate. Celebrate your small wins. The small things are the big things. Mm -hmm. And the big things are the big things. So what is the conclusion? There are no small things. <laughs> Celebrate them. Wow. Well done. Well done. What is I was gonna ask, what's uh what's your happy place? Oh man, well even when you said that, because of my knees I stopped playing basketball. <laughs> but, oh no. Um yeah, when I was a kid, I would it's like meditative mm -hmm. state. You go out, you go to the you go find a hoop and you go shoot around, mm -hmm. you know, quiet outside. Mm -hmm. So probably, yeah, exercise. It's to go outside, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, whatever it is, and to walk without technology mm. and yeah, to think, I don't do that to enough. be, maybe you yeah. don't think about anything, um, body weight exercise. So um, we're downtown here and Tower Park is like 0.6 miles away. So middle of the day, I'll run up there. I'll be a kid on the playground. That's right. I work out on the playground. Mm. Wow. You know, I'm the weird dude that has to put his shirt back on when the kids show up and keep working out at the playground. So <laughs> that's, that's, awesome. that's a happy place. That's and good I, advice. Yeah, I like though. talking to people. You yeah. Know? Connect with the earth, connect with yourself, um, connect with their hobby. Um, that brings you joy. Yeah. You got anything uh, to well, add to that? I'm 23 years old. I still play a little bit of Fortnite. Uh, I won't lie. I do. I also play pickleball. That's that's earthly. Yeah. That's that's active. That's a lot of fun. He's so young and sponging. We got a lot to teach, Brady. Yeah, that's young. okay. You're doing good. I feel extremely young right now, actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's good to good to have a work life balance. You can't be just go 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 mm -hmm. all the time. You gotta you gotta love yourself a little bit. Connect with friends. Connect with family. Yeah. Yeah, and do it in a way that amplifies your strengths. So I got to do the strengths find like the full 32 strengths yeah, finders. Yeah, we're talking about that. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And consistency is low on mine too. So it's not necessarily that it's not it's not a weakness until it gets in the way. Mm. Then you have to use your strengths to kind of mitigate it and make sure it's not working against you. But, but you do have amazing strengths. And so if food, if not exercising, uh, if you don't know you have an allergy, like these things dampen your strengths. They dull your strengths. And then your weaknesses, not weaknesses, your less dominant strengths, they start showing up a lot more when all, your first 10 are just fuzzy. And if there's anything that makes your strengths feel fuzzy, you got to find some things that are useful and beneficial to your body and mind to get you back on track and focused, like dialed in and focused. Yeah. Focused, meaning you can just look at someone in the eyes and understand what they're saying nice. and have an intelligible conversation where you care to listen. And you're not just in your head or half present. So right. hmm. massive difference in life. Every interaction, whether it's business related or family related, it's just amazing. That's the stuff I'm passionate about, if you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> this is a good thing. Yeah, we have such awesome. good talks. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. We, can do, we can make this a weekly thing. Yeah. <laughs> As people do on podcasts. <laughs> okay, so just to wrap it up, All we right. talked about the boot camp. We talked about principles. We talked about catchphrases, stuff yeah. like that. Not to say catchphrases, but phrases that are useful to you in mm -hmm. different seasons of life. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else you guys want to layer on? Just one thing 
that you would want to uh, let the audience know? You go. So you can do it. You can do it. Like anything you set your mind to, you can do. Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind can conceive and then believe it can achieve. I think a lot of this comes down to self-confidence, faith. And even when you wane in your faith, borrow other people's belief. So surround yourself with other people that can help build up your confidence while you're still working on yours. I love what you said about the word focus. I have one more, Brady. You're going to love it. It's called focus twice. And the first focus is to find others that are creating ultimate success. When you do that, the law of association and the law of averages will work for you. You're going to become the average of the, of the people around you. Mm -hmm. So find other people creating ultimate success. Choose your friends with intention. Choose your associations with intentions. You have 100% control over your choices. Find other people creating ultimate success. And then the second focus is to forget others causing unnecessary stress. Now, you, you can't completely divert stress in your life. We all have different levels of stress, whether it's work anxiety, performance anxiety. Um, what am I going to, where am I going to uh, choose to eat this evening for dinner? And, and your body rises a little bit of stress. That's not unhealthy. That's normal. I mean, unnecessary stress. Forget others causing unnecessary stress. Don't put yourself in environments where you're really high levels of, um, you know, stress levels and frustration and irritation. Be intentional about your environment. So mm -hmm. I would just leave leave with one more catchphrase or takeaway from Hurdle Life Coach Terry Liggins: Focus twice. Focus twice. You can uh, do it. Gosh, I was good. I had something, but after all that, I'm you just get all fired up. Just spaced. I know. Just spaced now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good stuff. Focus twice. Focus twice. Find others creating ultimate success. Oh, I remember. I was just gonna say, if anybody listens to this podcast and then comes to an event, definitely let us know that you came from this because it'd be cool to make that connection. Yeah, you said that earlier too. I wanted to. Uh, pile up on it, but I wanted to honor the space. Startup Sioux Falls, the building is great. Oh yeah, it, it does exactly what it's designed to do: create these social collisions. People, everyone in there wants to see themselves succeed and the and the person next to them. Right. So when you just allow yourself to get outside of that uh, social awkwardness of saying hello to someone, you're going to be very pleased and rewarded with how kind and generous um, the other per that stranger is when it comes to listening to you and giving you some encouragement. So I love popping in down there myself, um, around and in those hallways. Um, and so just wanna encourage people to certainly come down there and hang out with the Startup yeah. Sioux Falls yeah, and, community. And getting outside of the comfort zone at first is, is it a little bit nerve wracking or scary. And But once you do it, the rest of your day, you're just you're just all smiles because it's, so, it's just so rewarding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good time. And we use that word collision a lot because that's what happens. Once you have this collision, there's all these opportunities and experiences and things that could happen that you have no idea. Mm -hmm. It's just you're creating. It's your literal creation mm -hmm. versus the opposite, which is I'm going to go do the same thing that I've done yesterday and the day before. And I, I, I know exactly what the outcome is. It's so linear, but you have a collision. Yeah. I, like, I got this dude as my mentor now. and I, All I did was go to something that <laughs> took yeah. me a weekend. <laughs> That's, no. why I, that's why I tell people to have kids, millions of experiences you never would have had that yeah. are unique to you and your environment. That's just me. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're done. Uh, this is Start Dakota Podcast. Amos, Terry's, thank you so much. Brady, thank you so much. Thank you. Hope you got some value out of this. We'll see you. Uh, let me see you. Thanks for joining us for Start Dakota. Visit our website at startupsufalls.com to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please tell a friend to rate our show on iTunes. If you are a founder and aspiring entrepreneur, you can get started by visiting our website at startupswhofalls.com slash start. Start Dakota is made possible by funding from the U.S. Small Business Administration. With this funding, Startup Sioux Falls is piloting an expanded version of its co-starters business accelerator program and providing additional resources to support underserved founders. Start with Startup Sioux Falls.